Juliana Pena. I can't quit talking about her. Juliana Pena won, and I got to win. I've gotten more credit from you guys for calling that upset. And I never knew that about myself. I never knew I was a parasite. I was surrounded by them my whole career. The day I found out that I also fall into that category is the day Glover Teixeira became the world champion. I used to train with Glover. I've never mentioned that to you guys. I've never said that to anywhere. That has never come up. Glover wins the world title. All of a sudden, I'm on YouTube talking about, you know, me and Glover back in the gym in the day. Then Juliana Pena gets a win. I found a way to get, get myself involved in this victory tour, right? I didn't know I was that guy. But Juliana Pena, and you've got to understand one thing, guys. Whatever Juliana does, I've got to then devil's advocate for you guys. If she goes right, and I go, oh, it's the right thing to go right. We get up and walk away. We have nothing to discuss. But something did just come to me, and it was a bit of a surprise, which is we're talking about this rematch, Juliana versus Amanda. Odds came out. Amanda's a four to one favorite in the rematch, which is always a head scratcher. I mean, odds are very significant. You come out and you say one thing, it's meaningful. You get an argument, you know, discussion, they're friendly. You're betting the boys. You put your money down, it is a very different level of significance. So the fact that Amanda could be a four to one favorite over the champion who just smoked her, at least to me, is interesting. Here's what I didn't realize until this morning. It's a rematch at 135. Jewel's belt is going up. What? What are you talking about? Why would Jewel's put her belt up? Hey, Amanda, I'll meet you halfway. I'll give you a shot at redemption, but we're doing it at 45. You're putting the belt up. That was a bit of a surprise for me. I love the attitude of Juliana Pena. I do not correct anything about Juliana Pena. I would give her a hug and congratulate her, and that's it. My mouth would be shut. I will offer for you... Why is she getting nothing out of this? What does Juliana get out of that? A little bit more prestige, what she views as a simple fight? Absolute legendary status to be the one to stop the one and, and reprove it and do it twice. That's something for sure. Is it just sportsmanship? Look, Amanda, you gave me a crack. I'm going to return the same favor. That means something. I appreciate it. But is that what it is? Is that what it is or was this a knee-jerk reaction? Because there is some chess to be played for the first time ever in females' mixed martial arts. This has been a game of checkers from Jump Street. Get them in there, keep contesting it, keep growing the division. Someday, somebody will have an opponent that the world cares about. We could even main event them, maybe. We could put them on top of the card. We could get them on Sports Center. But right now, it's a growing division. It's just been a game of checkers. Why? When you have multiple pieces, you now have a game of chess. And this all comes back to Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison is doing everything right. Kayla Harrison has star written on her. Kayla Harrison had never fought in the UFC, and Dana White went as far to say, I'll bring her in the UFC, and I'll put her right in there with Amanda. And then Dana furthered the thought because he said it would be a massive fight. If you can do a massive fight with anybody, doesn't matter who the opponent, doesn't matter what the stakes, doesn't matter what division, men's, women's, 45, heavyweight, makes nobody difference. If you can do a massive fight with somebody in their first day in the UFC, that person is special. Kayla is special. Kayla has done everything right. Kayla aligned her cannons all in the right direction, which was Amanda, was 145. Got the free agency, popped over. And I can just tell you firsthand, did you guys see the World MMA Awards where I bombed? I did, I did my job. I read the lines. I was on stage. I had my nice little suit, and nobody gave me a response. You want to know who did get a response? Kayla Harrison. Kayla Harrison was in the crowd. I said her name. These aren't Kayla's people. This was largely UFC-based. It was largely a Bellator crowd. She comes over from the PFL. I mean, in all fairness, these weren't Kayla's people. These weren't Olympians. These weren't judo athletes. They all knew who she was. They were all happy to see her. They cheered when I said, I said, Kayla Harrison is here tonight. It's all that I said, oh my goodness. I, I got a pop out of that crowd. My jokes bombed. Everything else I did, but she did it. And that means something. I mean, you want to know who stars is. There, there's a few way to know. You could go to the internet. You could do algorithms. You could do Google searches. You could go to social media and just tag the impressions and the likes and how many friends they got. You can also bring them into an audience amongst their peers and see the kind of reception they get. Every single weigh-in that Dana White's ever done is you get to the end of the weigh-in, meaning the co-main event and the main event, the crowd gets louder and louder. 
Whoever gets the loudest reception is the main event. Whoever gets the next loudest reception is the co-main event. That's a broad stroke. That's not scientific, but God damn, you can go off of it. You bet your ass you could build a business and a plan just around that. I share this with you guys when I was in New York. Brunson came in. All oh, the people were so happy to see Brunson, which made me feel good because I don't think anybody, and I'm guilty of this too, I don't think any of us have ever done a damn thing for Derek Brunson. So when he got this reset, we had blonde Brunson and people were excited to see him. I liked it. Then I compared that to Chris Weidman's reception. Chris's was, of course, more, but Chris's at home. This was in New York. They all got beat by Patty the Batty. All of the, I couldn't see, I saw these guys walk in where I was sitting. I couldn't see Patty the Batty. I didn't know who they were cheering for because everybody was standing up and trying to get over him and taking pictures. I couldn't believe it. Boom, boom, I've got my answer. That was your focus group. Now, as I'm talking about what a great job Kayla's doing, and how Caleb plays into this, if Jules wants to go and fight Amanda, they're still partners. They may not like each other. They may have an agreement. They may have decided to settle, settle it here. In our forum, the people's octagon. But they're partners nonetheless. You've got to bring something to the table. I mean, Dana White's the first one to teach us this lesson. He says, that's why I don't co-promote. I look into a co-promote. I got nothing. No, no ego against it. What are you bringing? What markets are you in? What distribution do you have that I don't already have? You want to co-promote with me? you got to be my partner. What are you doing, partner? Fair question by Dana. In all fairness, Dana is not in a position to co-promote right now because nobody can answer that question. He is the lion in the room. Okay. Jules. Amanda. Rematch. I'm on board. Why is Amanda not putting something up? Amanda has something to offer. It's a 145-pound belt. 145 pounds matters a lot right now because it would not only be about Amanda. You could then, for the first time in women's history, draw into Kayla. And either way works. We were all kind of excited for Amanda, but that, that talk was only going on for three, four weeks, maybe closer to two weeks. And Dana went as far as to call it a mega fight. We do that exact same thing except with Jules. And Jules is going to meet you halfway. Amanda's going to sit back. We're going to have to tell the story. Jules is going to come out and she's going to put on a performance and she's going to tell the story. In all fairness, if they both had two months, Jules is going to do a better job getting attention and notoriety to the fight with Kayla than Amanda was. In all fairness. And it did surprise me. I always thought it was at 145. She said, I'll rematch. I just always assumed it was at 145. I'm the champion here. I'll give you a shot at redemption. You're going to give me a crack at that belt. And 45 has really never been more important. I'm just bringing you guys to, this, to your attention. It's just a little bit of food for thought, but it is very relevant. It's always relevant to know what you're fighting for. It's the number one thing. If you want to get any emotion from the viewer, if you want to excite the media, who's going to go write about this and report on it? You must evoke an emotion. It's not the words that matter. People forget your words. They're never going to forget how you made them feel. And there is nothing to pull at those heartstrings more to be able to relate with the audience more, then make sure you're explaining why we're here. There could be an answer. And I trust that Jules has one. She'll respond to this. Maybe she'll tell me privately and I'll tell you. Maybe she'll come out and do it publicly. We'll all know. But I need to know what that answer is. I would have known it would have been built in. It would have been obvious if she was going to 45, if she was making Amanda put something up. It looks to me like Jules is just being a good sport. She also did this while absolutely high on life. Was it the right decision? Jules can handle herself. I, I, I think that she will win the rematch. That's not what I'm talking about. If she wins the rematch, what does she get? If she wins the rematch, where does she go from here? Who's next? What is the story? At 145 pounds, the story tells itself. At 135 pounds, I will await a response. 